Greetings, friend. I will show you how ranks solve this hard Sudoku using set equivalence theory in a way I've never seen before and why it's better than the traditional solve path. Puzzle and video links are in the description below. And with that, it's solving time. Okay, first thing ranks did is he noticed that with these two nines, and this nine is only two possibilities for nine and block one. And so this is Snyder notation. Anytime a three by three block, two possibilities for a candidate, mark them. And in case you solve one of these cells, you can solve the other right away. Then he found some Snyder eights in block five with these two eights and the, this eight. But then he quickly realizes he can actually solve for cell here in block five and then solve for another because you got all these nines. One, two, three, four nines peering in. You can always solve. And the, that's the only place a nine could be, just placing that Snyder eight. If you're new to this channel, welcome to Smart Hobbies. Subscribe and tap the bell for notifications. If you want to turn your passing interest in Sudoku into a fun and enjoyable hobby. Ranks got this puzzle from the Sudoku Cult Gospel. Uh, and in it, they're, each, they're trying to solve and show uh, the, all the creators like Philip Newman are trying to show a new and unique way to solve Sudoku puzzles. And they usually focus on a particular type of strategy. I told you it's set. We'll get to that in here in just a bit. But before that, Ranks did a little bit more testing. Kind of looked at where the fives can be. And noticed that with this five and this five, only two possibilities for five in block five. So they're a pointing pair. Because now fives can't be up here. Because if they're up here, no place to put a five in block five. And so it leaves only two places for five in block two. And they did some Snyder sevens down there in block eight. And then he filled out row eight. Because he saw there's some restrictions there with the one, two, three, and a four. After that, he looked for some Snyder nines because of these two nines and this nine in block seven, and then also in block nine because of this nine and that nine. Then he decided to fill out the rest of block nine. He saw some restrictions here. So this is a one, two, three, nine. And then he looks up column. Eight is it okay? I got a one, five, six, seven, nine. You can have a two, three, four, eight. And you realize it doesn't really get him anywhere. And then he says, Okay, it's time to try to use set, set equivalence theory. The other hint ranks had is that in the Stoke Colt Gospel, this particular puzzle is featured in chapter four and it talks about marine biology and fishes. And so he's like, Okay, you know, if it's using swordfish or x-wings or jellyfish anything in the fish family then usually set equivalence theory may help as all so you kind of notice that there's a lot of similar digits the five six seven eight nines that are in similar rows and it leaves just a few of these extra digits it's one two three four in, in separate columns so then he starts coloring he uses these four rows and what you want to do when you're doing set equivalence theory is you want rows where the digits line are lotly mostly the same so in this case six seven eight nine five six seven eight nine and they kind of line up mostly on the same column so this is a good choice that ranks did for the rows and then he decided to do five pink columns to capture the rest now what the happens here this is an uneven distribution but basically with set equivalence theory and i'll put a link to my tutorial right here to learn more about it your basis on the fact that each of these rows, each of these columns contain the digits one through nine, one set of that. And now with five pink and four green, you have one additional set of the digits one through nine. You have to keep that in mind. We do not care about the cells where they overlap because we already know that whatever's in the pink is the same in the green. We care about, and what we know we can do is that whatever givens are in these green have to be somewhere in the pink to maintain the equivalence of this puzzle but since we have an additional set of pink he calls it the bonus set we have to keep in mind that we got to figure out and account for that as well now the next thing that ranks does is he counts for equivalencies so just like we got rid of all the bicolored cells he looks here and he goes, okay, I got a nine in the green and a nine in the pink. Those basically cancel each other out, right? You know, this nine pink can be represented right here in the green. And so he gets rid of the nines. Then he gets rid of the, uh, the eights that are equivalent, the fives that are equivalent, and then the sixes. 
Ranks and I communicate through Discord, and we're on some of the similar uh, Sudoku servers. DM me through the user information below if you want to recommend a puzzle or just chat about Sudoku. And better yet, get access to my private Discord server by joining the Smarty Party. And I'll also send you monthly reward puzzle packs. Click on the pinned comment to get started. Now we're going to look at the keys to this puzzle. There's a couple of them. First, what you have to notice is that we have an empty cell right there. Okay? And ranks colored that blue. Now, we talked about the pink has an additional set of the digits 1 through 9. Since you notice in the green, there's no 1, 2, 3, and 4. This 1, this 2, this 3, and this 4 must be from that bonus set. Right? So they have to be from the bonus set. We don't know what goes in here. And that's a problem. Because this could be a 1, 2, 3, 4. It could be a 7, you know, based on the digits that look into it. And so we got to kind of needle down what can we know about that. And this is beautiful. I've never seen this before. And what we know is if this was filled in with a 5, 6, 7, or an 8, then all the purple digits would be 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9. And the reason it'd be 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9 is because that's all that's in here plus the additional 9. But since we, it's not filled in, we can look at just the purple digits inside block five. And this is what ranks does. You know that these two digits, these two cells can't be the same as this one, right? It cancels it out. It can't be the same. In that case, since it can't be the same as this, and every other digit one, would be a one, two, three, or four, if we knew what that was, then this cannot be a one, two, three, or four either. And, it, and so then we can actually narrow this down and realize that this has to be from the rest of that set, that bonus set. It has to be from the five, six, seven, eight, or nine. That's what all that can be in there, or part of, you know, of the nine in the bonus set. And since you have a five, eight, nine, looking at all these cells, plus a six right here, we can solve this cell. We can solve it for a seven. And then with the five, seven, eight, nine, we can solve this cell for a six. But we're not done. That's just the first big clue you need. There's a little bit more to this to be able to do some more solving. And I tell you to get to this point with the six and seven using traditional methods is so much harder. And I'll show you that right now. So if you didn't do set equivalence theory, you can get this through some fish action like ranks suggested. Here's what you'd have to do though. You can put the nine, eight right there. And then you would look with the ones. Where can the ones be? And that's what this blue represents. And you'll see that you can actually create a jellyfish here. Okay, so what you have is these rows, rows one, six, seven, eight. The ones can be in columns two, three, five, and nine, except for this additional fin right here. Okay, so this additional fin keeps this from being a jellyfish. And so either the fin is true, and ones in this column inside the block, uh, you know, these two cells not be a one, or the fin is false, and you end up with a jellyfish, which is also four by four. And so the ones will be restricted to these orange cells in columns two, three, five, and nine. And so by that, what we do is we can look right here and go, okay, you got a one, two, four, six, seven. If this, this is a one, that can't be a one. If it's not a one, the one's going to be one of these spots, that can't be a one. And so you can eliminate a one from that cell. And then you can do the same thing now with the twos. These are where all the twos can be in this puzzle. And you'll notice here that if you look across the columns, column two, well, excuse me, rows 1, 6, 7, and 8, they're limited to columns 2, 4, 5, and 9, except for this one extra fin. So this is a finned jellyfish. And explain this, again, if the fin is true, then these two cells can't be a 2. If the fin's false, you have a jellyfish of 2s. One of them's going to be in one of these spots, and this can't be a 2. And you're like, okay, are you sure about this, Timberlake? Well, let's tell you what. The other thing we can eliminate it too from is right here. You can basically eliminate it in the same block 
in one of the columns of the jellyfish. So we can eliminate two from both of these cells. And you're like, okay, why do you know this? Well, put a two in one of these cells. Put a two right here. You put a two right here, what's going to end up happening is you eliminate twos from those possibilities. And then you have to put a two in one of these cells up here in row one. So you can put a two right there. It eliminates these possibilities. And then you quickly see that in rows six, seven, and eight, you only have two columns to put three twos. And that's impossible. You can put a two there and there, but you have no place to put a two in row eight. You could go there and there, you'd have no place to put a two in row seven. So we run out of places to put two. So we know we can eliminate two from these two cells. Learn more about how swordfish jellyfish work in this tutorial. Now we can move on to the threes. This is where all the threes could be in this puzzle. And now you see here columns three, four, five, and nine is where they're limited to in rows one, six, seven, and eight. Except we have this one additional fin right there. Same places where it was for the ones and twos. And like I said, either three's there. If it's not there, it's going to be one of these orange cells. We can eliminate a three from one of those two cells. And then we move on to the fours. You see where the four is down there. It looks a little different, but once you put up where fours can be in rows one, six, seven, and eight, you'll see that they're limited to the same four columns, two, three, four, and five, except for that extra fin. And so with that extra fin, like I've already shown you, four can't be in either one of those two cells. So you eliminate that and you get a seven here and you get a six there just like ranks. However, without using set equivalence theory, the next step in this puzzle, you got to find three nasty naked triples. They're kind of hard to spot and they'll hold you up and you'll be kind of, Ur. so the set way is much nicer because you end up making some extra eliminations out here that really make a smoother solve. So we'll get back to that set solve and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, the first big deduction we made was that we could put a six and seven right here because we know it's not the same as that cell. Now, the next thing that Ranks does, and this is a, the second key of the puzzle, is he fills in these cells. He goes, okay, one, two, three, four, down column five. He notices this three, four is a pink cell. It's like, okay, wait a minute. We have the one, two, three, four from the bonus set, and we have now a three, four. It can't be any of these green digits. It has to be the blue green digit. So this has to be a three, four. That's the only place using set equivalence theory that's going to fit. So now you can figure out this is actually a three, four. This is huge because we found the equivalency. Now we can make some more solves in this puzzle. Because since that's a 3, 4, everything else has to be a 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9. And so Ranks is able to fill out all these for 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9. And maybe you're like, Tim, like, why a 9 again? The why the 9 is because you have that bonus set. And the 1, 2, 3, and 4 of the bonus set are represented here. So there's also going to be a 5, 6, 7, 8. But with the green digits, you know, we're not that concerned with it because we already know those are, can be in the purple but there's also an additional nine. The nine's not accounted for anywhere in the green, and it's not here. It's got to be somewhere in the purple for that fifth bonus set. So then what Ranks does, and you may notice here that we have the red for the candidates that are not supposed to be in certain cells. Uh, this is the way Ranks shows it in his solving. He wants to help out the newer solvers, and so I showed it the way that he did. You can go right here and go, okay, there's only one digit that can be. That's a five. And then he shows ranks saw that that was a seven. This is an eight. That's a five. And that is a nine. Now, this nine is the only nine that could be in the purple cells. The rest of the purple cells have to be five, six, seven, or eight. From here, I'll let you do the rest of the solving yourself. It's just going to be naked and hidden singles. And I'll tell you, ranks and I are not the only ones who put ourselves out there on video. Check out this next video to see what happened when Philip Newman entered a live Sudoku speed setting competition, and I was one of the hosts. Thank you so much for watching.